Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you're really worried about something and uh, you kept worrying even though you knew that worrying won't change the situation or help the situation in any way? And nevertheless, you just ah, kept on worrying. We're all doing this. And if we could have total mind power and just switched over toward these happy thoughts, uh, we'd just have done that and get on with our lives. But that doesn't really happen, does it? And did you know that about half of the time that you've been listening to this speech, your mind has probably been wandering off thinking about other things? According to a study by Daniel Gilbert and Matthew Killingsworth, our minds wander 46.9% of the time we spend awake. So our thoughts are automatic. They have a life of their own. And to create happiness by just controlled positive thinking, I think it's hard, if not even possible, impossible. And uh, I think it's time that we start talking more about this. How can we take positive action, actually making the change in our lives? Because if I would ask you to keep your focus on your breath, don't think about anything else for five minutes, I doubt that anyone in this room would be able to do that. But if I would ask you to please raise your hand like this for five minutes, I think we all would be better able to achieve this. So it's really difficult to control our thoughts and we have a better chance at controlling our actions, our behavior. Therefore, well-being is better built by positive action and not positive thinking. Also, we tend to look at ourselves as if we're these objective, rational beings uh, that perceive situations in this objective manner and we process information almost like a computer. I just take information in. But in reality, we're far from objective. And that's actually a good thing. Because if we would truly be able to process and perceive reality in all its nuanced complexity, we would be rather lost. It would be an overwhelming experience. So therefore, our brain has evolved several cognitive biases that helps us categorize and prioritize and sort information, making it more easy for us to navigate. But these cognitive biases, this sorting and prioritizing, is really affecting how we perceive life, how we perceive different situations. And I'd like us to explore this further in a little thought experiment. So I invite you all to think back at the last time that you had a evaluative conversation with your boss or manager. And uh, I'm quite sure that you got to hear a lot of good things. Things like how you contribute to the workplace. But I'm also quite sure that you got to hear something that you can improve with yourself, with your performance. One could almost say that your brain is concerned that you survive throughout this day. It's less concerned that you're a happy survivor. So by now we can understand that it's not strange that all of us sometimes feel anxious or tense or we worry. In one sense, we were built for this. But most of us, we long for this other kind of life with the meaning and the connection and the happiness. And I'm not sure that we can have one thing without the other, but there are definitely things and ways how we can cultivate happiness and build well-being. But this comes with good news and bad. The good news is that happiness is not something you find outside of yourself and it's not something you have or don't have. It's a skill that we all can work on. But the problem is that we just don't do it. And this definitely applies for myself. This is the worst part of having written a book on happiness because whenever I'm having a bad day, there's always someone who can do like, oh, haven't you read your own book, Katerina? You should know better. Uh, so I've learned that not even experts on happiness 
and knows how to turn knowledge into action. And this is one of the reasons why me and a friend, we started a psychological gym where organizations and the teams and individuals could come and train these skills in order to create more happiness and well-being. Because we want to make psychological training as common as physical training. Because today we know so many things about how to eat properly and how to exercise to sustain a physical health. But what would be the psychological version of a green smoothie or of doing 50 sit-ups? Is there really such a thing? And I would say yes, definitely. There's a lot of different exercises and things we can do, building healthy habits for ourselves. And I would like to present an example of this. So once you finished listening to this speech, when you're leaving this room later tonight, I'd like you to bring out your smartphone and text uh, a kind, appreciative gratitude text to someone that you care for. And maybe you can just notice how that feels. And this is a good example of an exercise that I often do with leaders and teams. And just a couple of weeks back, I did this at a two-day leadership conference. And uh, later, I found out that one of the participants had texted his wife, writing, I love you very, very, very much. Which made the wife think, what are you doing at that leadership conference? <laughs> and um, it just tests texting one person at one time it won't change the world in any way. But turning this into a healthy habit over time can have a large impact. And to dedicate this habit to caring for your relationships might be one of the most powerful actions that you can take when it comes to happiness. The researchers found that happiness doesn't come from wealth, it doesn't come from fame or working hard, it comes from relationships and it's not about the number of friends that you have or whether or not you're in a committed relationship with a partner they found that it's the quality of the relationship that counts being able to be vulnerable listening and sharing what's close to your heart that's what matters today is another good day unlock the path to your best self Discover the transformative power of the 12 happy life secrets. Embrace all of them and watch your happiness thrive. Remember, your happy life is an inside job.